Hello and welcome to the episode 275 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. The rehearsals for an ABC British special, the recording of the third 1967 single and the mixing of the original version of Across the Universe are some of the stories on which we'll focus our attention today. On the 2nd of October 1960, the Beatles had their 47th performance at the Indra Club in Hamburg, West Germany. Their first residence in town was about to see a drastic change, as we will see tomorrow. Moving on to 1962, the Beatles, now in their definitive lineup, performed a two hour lunchtime concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. One year later, in 1963, John Lennon, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr were back in England from their holiday. Talking about holidays makes me think about my duty, which is to remind you to help me grow this community by telling all of your contacts about What A Fab Day. You don't have to, but if you are so inclined, you can visit www.simonmass.com support to see what else you can do to show me your love and appreciation. If you hate my guts and my work, instead, feel free to drop me a line and tell me why. It's always interesting. Thank you! On the 2nd of October 1964, the Beatles were at the Granville Studio in London to rehearse for the filming of an episode of ABC's programme Shindig one of the main pop music shows in mid-1960s United States. The Beatles had just returned from an extremely tiring first North American tour, not even two weeks before, see episode 264 for that, and so they accepted to be on the show only if the filming had taken place in UK. Producer Jack Good, then, flew to London to record an all-British episode of the show. The Beatles topped the bill comprising of Sandy Show, PJ Proby, the Car Denver Trio, Tommy Quickly, Sounds Incorporated, and Lynn Cornell. Since this was an American production, Good couldn't use any BBC or ITV facility, hence the choice for the independent Granville Studio. In 1967, the editing of the footage of Magical Mystery Tour went on at Norman's Film Productions. In addition, between 10 pm and 2.30 am, the Beatles were at the EMI Studios. First, they touched upon the mono mix of Your Mother Should Know, with five new attempts, the last of which became the definitive one. After that, they recorded a new song, Hello Goodbye, working title Hello Hello, chosen to be the band's next single even if its recording came too late to include the song in the Magical Mystery Tour film. The Fabs recorded 14 takes of the rhythm track, with piano, organ, drums and tambourine, followed by overdubbing of various percussions and two reduction mixes, bringing all the recorded parts on track one of the four-track recording machine. 1968, the Beatles reconvened again at the Trident Studios to record overdubs on Honey Pie. Between 4 pm and 3.30 am, lead vocals and a guitar solo by John Lennon were recorded onto the existing rhythm track. Finally, in 1969, the World Wildlife Fund, or WWF as it is better known today, gave notice that its charity album No One's Gonna Change Our World was finally happening. The Beatles had decided to contribute to it with Across the Universe, recorded in February 1968, as we've seen in episode 39. Between 9.30 and 11 am today, George Martin produced a stereo mix of the song at the EMI Studios. Martin decided to speed up the recording considerably, the result was 10 seconds shorter than the original, completing a version that can be heard in the Past Masters Volume 2 album, first released in 1988. 
the WWF album including this song, instead, was released in Britain on the 12th of December 1969 and also featured Bee Gees, Scylla Black, Dave D, Dozy, Breaky, Mitch and Titch, Bruce Forsyth, Rolf Harris, The Hollies, Lulu, Spike Milligan, Harry Sacomb and two songs by Cliff Richard. And with this, we can close the episode. I hope to find you here tomorrow, when we'll have the first denial that the Beatles had split up. In 1966, mind. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.